guys, it's Margie, and today I'm doing a movie review of the 1999 film Mickey Blue Eyes. This film starred Hugh Grant, James Caan, G.N. Triplehorn, Burt Young, James Fox, Joe Vitarelli, Jerry Becker, Maddie Corman, Tony Darrow, Paul Laser, Vincent Pastor, Frank Pellegrino, Scott Thompson, and John Vettimigia. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it was directed by Kelly Macon, written by Adam Scheinman and Robert Kahn, cinematography by Do Donald E. Thorin, editing by David Freeman, music by Basil Paul Doris. Okay, guys, so the basic plot for this movie is there's this young man, Hugh Grant, that has fallen in love with Jeanne Triplehorn's character, and he is obviously in love with her, so he asks her to marry him, but before he can, you know, obviously marry her, he has to meet her family, and he finds out that they are actually attached with the mob. And so they try and suck him into the mob and that kind of thing. And it's just, it's a romantic comedy, essentially. Of course, it has Hugh Grant in it. So let's jump into performances. I thought Hugh Grant was great in this movie. I really thought he was good. I, I like his style of acting a lot. And I would probably name him the um, king of romantic comedies uh, just because that's what he does and that's what he does best. So I thought he was really, really good in this movie. I don't think anybody else could have done it better, and I thought he was great. Um, moving on along the list here, James Can or Khan, uh, it's spelled C-A-A-N, did a really great job, though. I kept kind of picturing in my mind Robert De Niro in this role. I know, but of course he wouldn't probably have taken it, but um, I just, I thought he would have done really well. I'm sidetracking, though. Uh, but James James Can was great. He was really good. I just kept seeing De Niro, though, in my head doing it. Um, Jean Triplehorn, I felt like was really good, actually. A uh, couple, couple actresses, I could have seen doing it a little better. But on the whole, she was really, really good. And I could have, I thought just like people kept flashing through my mind that would have absolutely ruined it. And she did not. So applause to her for that. Burt Young, um, I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with Burt Young just because he was in Rocky 1, 2, and, you know, several of the Rockies. Um, probably all of the Rockies, almost all of them anyway, except for Rocky 6. Um, but he was great, as he normally is, and it was so good to see him in something other than Rocky. So that was a big incentive for me to see this film. James Fox, Joe Vitarelli, Jerry Becker, Maddie Corman, Tony Darrow, Paul Laser, Vincent Pastor, Frank Pellegrino, Scott Thompson, and John Ventimiglia. All great. The supporting cast for this, I thought, was really good. And um, obviously, most of them were uh, mobsters. I thought the whole cast had really good chemistry on the whole. The directing for this movie was actually pretty good. Um, there wasn't anything that really just blew me away. But it wasn't just totally, you know, awful. Um, and that's kind of how I felt about the whole film. It could have been so much worse. Um, but it was it was solid. The directing was solid. The writing in this film was actually pretty solid. Though There were a few moments where you were just like, you know, I don't think she'd really say that. And, you know, there's like a couple things in the writing that, okay, spoiler, and I'm going to put right here where you can skip through to skip past the spoiler. Um, but if you've seen this movie, keep watching. Who did not know that at the end of the movie, um, she she's not, you know, she, uh, here's my notes. You know that Jeanne Triplehorn's character is not really dead after she gets shot. And when they're in the ambulance, you're like, you know she's fixing to get up. Like, hello. we <laughs> So predictable. But, I mean... You know, the, like the younger, you know, your kids will fall for it. But it was just like, come on, you know, she's not dead. They're not that stupid enough to have the main character die. And, you know, that would just be pointless. So totally knew that, um, you know, that, that wasn't going to happen. The comedy in this movie was not, it didn't really make me laugh that hard. And it's, this is definitely not one of um Hugh Grant's funniest movies, you know, uh, not because of his performance, but because of the writing. There, it was funny, but it wasn't just like laugh out loud like several of his movies are. 
Um, cinematography was good. Again, there were some nice things. There were some good panning shots. The lighting was good. Um, so I thought he did well, um, Donald E. Thorin. Donald E. Thorin has also did the cinematography for Tango and Cash and Sent a Little Woman. So if that, that helps you identify him any. Editing by David Freeman, I thought was good. The movie did drag a little bit, a little bit, but there wasn't a lot of scenes I was like, cut, cut, you know, so it was pretty good as far as the pacing and everything, so thank you, David Freeman, for not making this one too draggy. Music was by Basil Polduris, who has also done the music for Free Willy, Hunt for, and Hunt for Red October. I thought he did a really great job, um, especially in as far as like choosing which songs went in the movie. You know, obviously he didn't compose a lot of them, but um, and he and probably his team and some other people had influence into what songs that had been previously recorded by artists and yada yada were chosen to go in this movie. I thought all those selections were great, and I really enjoyed the music for this film. I enjoyed the music that he scored too. I thought it was appropriate. And I thought it went well with the movie. Again, not one of my favorite scores. It didn't really stand out, but I mean, it was so good. It was good for this movie. So, great job to him. Um, let's see. I, again, I thought Hugh Grant was great. I'm just glancing over notes. Let's jump into this parent's guide, though. Language in this one's probably a little worse than what you would think um, for a movie like this, but not. <laughs> You know, too bad, probably what you're expecting because of the mob element. Two F's, no B's, two S's, four H's, four GD's, one D, and four A's. So, not that awful, but um, it's a little more than, you know, a lot of movies have, and it's definitely prominent. Um, moving on to sexual content, there's a little bit of sexual indu induendo, and there's some cleavage, and we see Hugh Grant in his underwear. And there's a few, like, lewd dancing and that kind of thing, but there's no sex scene, so it's not, and there's, like, a lot of cleavage, actually. Um, low-cut dresses is what I'm saying. So, but it wasn't that bad. Violence or gore, um, Fake blood, lots of fake blood, a couple real wounds, but not really, and uh, some gun violence, you know, it's a mob, but it's nothing ridiculous, and, you know, it's just classic romantic comedy type of thing, drug and alcohol, uh, there's some smoking, and there's also some drinking of, like, wine and stuff like that. Anyway, guys, to sum this one up, I'm giving this movie three stars out of five. Would I watch it again? Uh, I think it's a cute date movie. I mean, I think it, it's cute for, like, you know, just, hey, me and my bud or, who, you know, whoever want to just sit down and be entertained. But it's not going to be one of my favorites. It's definitely not one of Hugh Grant's um, best comedies just because the writing was not that solid. Um, and I don't know. He, he, had, he shined. He shined, but he didn't have as many opportunities to shine. There were several funny moments, though, in this one. It did make me laugh, but, again, not one of the best romantic comedies. I thought it was decent. Three out of five stars. Would I watch it again? Again, I might. So, I'm not going to give an official ruling on this one. But, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my review of the 1999 film, Mickey Blue Eyes. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.